Today I will show you how to install all the necessary bindings, create things and items, so we could have live weather and astro data inside this hat panel. Hey everyone, my name is Sim and you're watching Smartest House, a channel where I show you how to design and build my smart home. If you are new to this channel, want to see more of what I do, or want to learn how to create DIY projects for your own smart home. Start now by subscribing and click on the bell icon so you'll be notified when I upload a new video, and I do that every week. In the previous episode, I showed how to create this layout and how you can save it so you can access it from any other device. But at the moment, you don't have any live data coming into these widgets. To get started with that, you'll need to open Visual Studio Code and all the open app configuration files. I'll talk about why I use VS Code and how to set it up in this video. To install bindings, open the services folder and click on addons.cfg. Remove the hashtag in front of bindings and type an equal sign. Now you can type in all the bindings you want, separated by a comma. I want to install the astro binding for sun and moon data and the weather binding. Take note that for weather binding, you need to type weather1. Once you do that, Hit Ctrl S to save and open app will download and install them. I will start with the Astro data first. To get more information about the binding, Google Astro binding and then go to openapp.org page for the documentation. I've added the link to the page in the description. Here you can find all the information you will need to work with the binding, the channels available, how to set it up, etc. For now, I will just copy the basic thing configuration. Going back to VS Code, we need somewhere to paste it. We will need a things file and an items file. To do that, right click on the folder where you want to create the file in and make a new file. You can call the file anything you want, I'll call them both test, but an items file has to have a format of name.items and a things file name.things. Same goes with the rest of the files. So in this case, the items file is called test.items and the things file is called test.things. It is important that you do this because this way OpenAMP knows how to differentiate the files. And of course they need to be in the designated folders. Now that the files are created, go to the test.things file and paste in the lines of code we copied. If you look at the code, each line represents a different thing. The basic syntax of a thing is as follows. Binding ID, type ID, thing ID, all separated by colons. Then comes label and location, but this is optional and as you can see, we don't have any here. And lastly, in square brackets are the parameters of the thing. Note that all but the label and location are required. So you have to declare the binding ID, type ID, thing ID and the parameters. Parameters for the astro binding, according to the documentation, are latitude and longitude which makes perfect sense. And optionally interval, which indicates the refresh rate in seconds if you want to calculate positional data like elevation that is constantly changing. And that is our Astro Things setup. Now we need items so we can access this incoming data. Going back to the Astro Binding documentation and scrolling further down, you'll see the items examples. Because at the moment, I'm only interested in sunrise and sunset times, I'll copy these top two lines. Take a bit of time though to read through the documentation and see what it has to offer, because there is a lot and you will find really cool stuff you might want to use. Now back in VS Code, head over to the test.items file you created earlier and paste in the items. The basic syntax of items is as follows. Item type, item name, Label with the state format in square brackets, icon name, groups the item belongs to, tags, and binding configuration. Take note that the order is important, and so are the different bracket styles square, curly, etc. Out of all these, item type and item name are mandatory, others are optional. And as with things, each line represents a different item. So in our case, from left to right, we have the item type, date time, because sunrise and sunset are time values. Item name is sunrise underscore time. And this is what we'll use inside OpenHab to refer to the item. 
Inside the double quotes is the item label, sunrise, and inside the square brackets is the formatting style. We don't have an icon, any groups or tags specified, and as I said, they are optional. Lastly, inside the curly brackets, we have the binding configuration. We need to link the item to a channel, where we want the data to come from. I talk about items, links and channels in my Open App Basics video. If you have any questions, go and have a look at the video or let me know below in the comments. Back to our item. So our configuration goes as follows. Astro, Sun, Home. Specify the binding ID, type ID and thing ID respectively. Going back to the binding documentation, you'll see that the thing is Sun. Inside Sun, there is a group called Rise. And that's what we have here as well. And a channel called Start. Everything is in descending order. The type of item suitable for this channel is date time item. And that is exactly what we have here. Now that we have the things and items configured, let's connect them to widgets on our half panel. Head over to the half panel dashboard designer. I talk about that in my previous video, and if you haven't seen that, there's a link to it in the description. Open the Sunrise widget edit window. And now, as you can see, we have open app items available. Choose sunrise underscore time. That is our item name. Do the same with sunset. Now run the dashboard. Well, this is a lot of information displayed and I don't think having the date of the sunrise and sunset there is really necessary. To get rid of the unnecessary info, go back to the edit window and type capital double H colon double M in format. This will only display the hours and minutes. That's better. Now we have live sunrise and sunset times on our half panel. As you saw, there is loads more channels in the Astro Binding you could use to get tons more information. And they will update with the correct information without us having to worry about it. Next step is to get live weather data. First, let's google weather binding and go to the corresponding page on openhab.org. I've also added the link in the description. Again, there is extensive documentation about the binding and I urge you to have a read. The first thing you'll notice that under binding configuration it says the binding can be configured through the file services forward slash weather.cfg. And that is why it's important to read through the documentation. Configuring each binding is a little different. Unlike the Astro binding, weather doesn't have any things to configure. Instead, it is done in weather.cfg file. So, we will need to create this file in the services folder. Before you go to VS Code and create a new file, you have to stop OpenHand. To do that, open an SSH client. To find out which one I use, have a look at the installing OpenHand on a Pine64 video. Once logged in, run this command. sudo system control stop OpenHand2. Now OpenHab service is stopped and we can safely create a new configuration file. Copy and paste the example to the new weather file. Starting from the bottom. Longitude and latitude are pretty self-explanatory, the location you want the weather data to be about. Update interval is period in minutes a fresh data call is made. Because weather doesn't change that quickly, 10 minutes is more than enough. Plus, as you'll see later on, providers have limits to the maximum number of calls you can make. Next is language. I'll change this to EN for English. Provider is the web service that provides us with the data. You'll find the different providers available in the binding documentation. I'm going with Open Weather Map, so I'll need to change the provider name. Lastly, we will need an API key. To get this, head over to the provider's webpage. In my case, open weather map. I've added the link in the description. Click on the price tab. You'll see that for the free subscription, the maximum number of calls per minute is limited to 60. Even though that is a lot more than the 10 minutes we specified, there is no point having it any higher. Once you've signed up, an API key will be sent to you by email. Copy and paste it in the configuration file. Now that binding is configured, we need to create items. Go back to the binding documentation page and scroll down to the example items section. 
We have four widgets on a hat panel we want to get data to. Temperature, humidity, rain and wind. Find the examples, copy and paste them into the test.items file. When you're building your own system, it is a good idea to have different items in different files just to make it easier to read. But for now, I'll keep it all in here. The basic layout is the same as with the Astro items. Just the binding configuration looks a little different. Weather binding is more of an exception for that matter and usually items look more like the Astro items above. Now save all the files. Before we can make changes in HAP panel, we need to restart OpenHAP. In the SSH client, type sudo system control start openhab2. It will take a little while for openhab to get back up and running, so go and make a coffee. Once back in HAP panel dashboard designer, we can connect the widgets to our new items. When doing that, also click on the use server provided format if available. Now when you run the dashboard, you'll see the live weather data. But look at the temperature. It doesn't really matter if it's 10.8 or 10.81 degrees. That is unnecessary accuracy. To change that, go back to the test.items file. Inside the square brackets, as you might remember, is the formatting info. Let's change this 2 to a 0 on all of them and hit Ctrl S to save. Go back to HAP panel and if it hasn't refreshed yet, do it manually. And behold, we have information that is live and actually in a useful scale. And that is it for this video. Now you have a user interface on a touchscreen with live data coming in. Hope this video was helpful in understanding how bindings, things and items work. There is tons more to learn and much more you can create. This is merely just scratching the surface. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them. I also have all these steps in my blog at smartestos.net, so if you haven't yet, go and check it out. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified when a new video comes out. In the next video, I'll show you a start of a new project, a complete automated lighting system, using HAB panel, external switches, open HAB rules and much more. Until then, take care and I'll see you next time.